So question three, explain the rationale behind applying the system development life cycle during the development of information system. So as we know, the system development life cycle provides a systematic way of developing a system to ensure that all the needs or the, or the, the user needs, all the financial needs, all the due diligence are done. For the system before it is it is used or before it is taken to the user at the user level. So the rationale behind it, the reasons why we need that SDL is one, it gives what we call a structured approach. It provides a structured and organized framework for developing information system. This is why it is able to break the system development lifecycle into different phases. Uh, and this each and every each and every phase will have specific goals that are to be achieved the, speak, the specific task and even the timelines so this and uh, ensures that uh, development activities are well defined managed and execute, executed in a, in a very systematic manner so that when the when the system is finally done with each and every phase is looked at and then it is seamless also it 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 is use, usable for uh, what we call risk management so this emphasizes risk management it, it identifies that at each and every phase of development of a system it identifies the potential challenges and then they are able to be addressed and even tackled at early development process so this one is very important because remember when this uh, development life cycle is taking place. There is proper analysis that is done, planning, and even testing at each phase. So when testing and, and all these are done at this stage, we are able to reduce the likelihood of unexpected resistance or issues that may arise at a later uh, stage of development of these systems. Then question B, outline four methods of controlling unethical behavior. In, uh, in ICT. So, unethical behaviors are behaviors that do not meet the, the required standard behavior or ethics in, 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 in ICT. So, the first one will be establishing and enforcing ethical codes and policies. So, we must have comprehensive or well defined ethical codes, or rules, and policies that will clearly outline acceptable behavior and practices. For this individual working in ICT field, so this uh, this 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 calls could sometimes and in in, in in incorporate things like privacy, intellectual property rights, cybersecurity, and the fair use of technology. And we ensure that all employees and all the stakeholders within this field are able to work within this code without breaching any. Two, we must implement access control and monitoring. Access control. You, you utilize access control to restrict users' access. For example, users should not access information that are not related to them. Sensitive information that will only require particular people should not be left out to other people who are not authorized to access them. So this will prevent any misuse of this information. So to do this, there could be monitoring tools or logging logging mechanisms that track user activities and. They are able to detect unusual behavior. Also, there could be regular audits and compliance checks. So there could uh, there could be some periodic audit and compliance check to, uh, to access organizations' adherence to ethical standards to to see if uh, the employees, or the stakeholders within these organizations, are really adhering to the lay, laid uh, uh, down rules and even regulations ethics and also ethics training and education the employees need to be given ongoing ethics training and education so that they might have awareness this will raise awareness about the importance of this ethical behavior the potential consequences of uh, ethical actions and how to go about all this then the next question says BD company has established that its uh, information is being uh, electronically uh, it's dropped through their servers. So it's dropping is a technique where uh, 
a, a person or a device is able to is able to, to anonymous, anonymously get information from a system which are not related to them, which are not authorized to them. So one we could establish and enforce ethical codes and policies. Again, here we talk about comprehensive ethical codes and policies that clearly outline acceptable behavior. We could also implement access control and monitoring here, in which case now we utilize control and, and we restrict access to sensitive data. And how do we do that? We ensure that uh, those who are not authorized are not able to access information that do not pertain to them or that they can easily uh, miss. So in this case, again, we can employ monitoring tools again. And again, number three, we could do what we call with lowest protection and reporting mechanism. So you, you establish a secure and confidential mechanism for employees who, who might be in a position to give report or they might report behaviors uh, that violate the policies. So they should be protected. We call them whistleblowers. They should be protected so that uh, they have the confidence to do that because they know that they will not be disclosed and maybe uh, uh, mistreated by these perpetrators. Then we, we must have regular audit and compliance check. So we must conduct again periodically audit and compliance check to assess organizational adherence to these ethical standards. Again, ethics training and education will apply even in this case. Then question E says, outline four factors that could influence the choice of an organization system. Sorry, outline four factors that could influence the choice of an information system in an organization. So how, what factors, what factors that will, will determine or that will, 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 will influence the choice of an information system to organization. The first one would be, business objective and requirements. So specific goals and objective organization could play a very important role in determining this type of information system need, needed. So because we have different information systems that maybe they, 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 they vary in terms of, in types of goals that or, or whatever they are meant to do or whatever they can achieve. For example, we could have customer relation management, enterprise resource planning. Each and every one has different goals. So the, the business or the organization must first look at its uh, goal, objective and requirement, and then uh, look for information system that will align to these objectives. Then the second one is size and structure of the organization. So the size of the organization could be easy, a matter. Why? Because Maybe the organization could be small, medium size, or even a very large uh, corporation. So a very large corporation will need a, a complex system that is highly scalable. A small organization will just maybe need a, a information system with very few functionalities. So size and structure of the organization matters a lot. And then budget and resources. So the financial resources available, again, will determine the type of information system. Because we have different systems that have different costs, different fees to be paid, licensing fee, implementation, training costs, a lot of, uh, of, of a lot of cash could also go to skill IT personnel that would support and even manage this information system. So uh, budget and resource is also key. Then we have technological infrastructure and, and compatibility. So what are the existing technological infrastructure within this organization? For example, we could talk about uh, things like hardware, software, even networking capability. These ones uh, play a very major role. And again, at this is uh, hardware resources or software resources easily integrated or integratable to this system. Again, we can look at scalability and future growth. So we must consider if uh, we are maybe foreseeing the growth uh, or, or we can tell that our organization is going to grow or is going to scale up, then it is very important to 
to look for the system uh, that will easily scale upwards that will easily incorporate additional functionalities when growth is seen